Hey guys, welcome along to another video. I'm out here at DSR. I'm Zoe. Today, uh, as you can tell, we are two up. <laughs> you gotta hold it out, darling. I'm trying this as far as it goes. I've got short arms. <laughs> so we are out today, obviously two up on BMW GSA, because we're gonna give you our 10 top tips for riding two up. And they don't involve holding a camera out at the back. That is bad form. As we go through this, I'm going to give you my five tips as the rider's perspective. And I will give you the five tips from the pillion perspective. I'm going to do my top five in a kind of chronological order, which makes sense to me. Number one for myself is whenever you are going to have a pillion, is to give them a kind of mini rider's brief. So kind of everything that we're going to discuss throughout this video is potential things that you want to brief your pillion on things they want to know. It's different if you've got a partner that's on the back regularly, they'll already know what to do and what not to do. Um, but if you are getting someone who's fresh, who's new, or never been on the back and you want to give them their kind of first initial experience, then 100% you need to give them some form of brief because if you don't, things could end badly, not only for them, but for yourself as well. And more importantly, you don't want their first time being on a bike to be the last time. You don't want it to put them off. My first tip as a pillion is all about where you hold on to and I cannot recommend enough getting a pair of love handles which I've got on here with Matt. For me on the GSA the grab handles on the actual bike sit right underneath my big old thunder thigh so I need somewhere a little bit more comfortable to grab hold of. Personally with the love handles I like to have the handles at the back of Matt I don't like to wrap my arms around him, on the bike that is. For me, I like to support myself, I don't want to be leaning into him, slipping into the back of him when he's braking, I like to support my own, support myself, and love handles are a brilliant way of doing that. Number two then, for the rider's perspective, is explaining to the person getting on the correct way of getting on and off the bike. You don't want the person just kind of running over, just grabbing hold of you and jumping on. As a rider, you want to make sure you're ideally somewhere flat, somewhere uh, where your feet are secure on the floor, not gravel or anything around. You want to make sure you're on the brakes and obviously they'll be getting on the left hand side more likely than not. So as a rider, you're going to kind of lean the bike into the right hand side just to counteract uh, the effect on the suspension because if you've got the bike central or to the left uh, and they go to get on you've got a strong possibility that they're going to pull you over and not be able to hold you the bike and them up whilst they're kind of uh, getting on so as a rider you've prepped yourself you made sure you're in a good position communicate with uh, the pillion to make sure they know when it's a good time to get on and also in reverse when it's a good time to get off. My second tip as a pillion rider is the motorcycle gear that you are wearing. I cannot stress the importance of dressing as though you were riding yourself. It's still gonna hurt if you come off. Not to scare you or put the fear into you, but it's probably gonna hurt more if you come off as a pillion just because of the physics, uh, the physics of coming off when, you, when you're on the pillion uh, seat. I wear exactly what I wear as when I'm riding. On the rare occasion I sit on the back of Matt's motorcycle. Number three from the rider's perspective is communication. If you don't have comms, uh, I'll talk about with comms, if you don't have comms you need to kind of, in your rider's brief, tell the passenger or the pillion different ways of communication whether you're going to be shouting to each other obviously when you're going faster it's going to be very difficult to turn your head and actually uh, better hear each other so you have to come up with like a, a tap system if i squeeze either side of you if i give you a tap on this shoulder if i give a tap on that shoulder if i as a rider i tap your leg i'm letting you know yeah it's safe you can do whatever you need to do i.e maneuver your bum because you've slid down or uh, kind of get on or off the bike ideally getting yourself some comms would make life a hell of a lot easier because obviously you can then just talk to each other like normal so when they're getting on getting off you can go yeah cool i'm ready and they go yeah getting on whilst you're going along then you can also she communicate with each other uh, especially if the pillions get inside you don't want them falling asleep back there and obviously the easiest way 
if you've got comms are just better talk to each other so highly recommend even if you get some cheap uh comm sets off amazon highly recommend getting something my third pillion point is also communication not because we're lazy and can't think of 10 together but because it is doubly important as the pillion you need to be able to speak to your rider firstly as Matt said before the getting on and off the bike is so important but as a pillion doesn't mean that you get to switch off if I can see that Matt might not be in a great position for me to get on the bike then I need to be able to communicate that to him as well equally be able to tell him when is the right time that I'm planning on getting on and waiting for him to give me the A-OK -okay. uh, but also equally important as we're riding if something's wrong back here or if I can see something that he can't it just helps massively to be able to speak and not be trying to shout or tap each other as we go along okay okay coming in at number four is bike suspension if you've got an older bike and you can only adjust it manually if you're going to be doing two up with luggage then have a look in the owner's manual and you might need to adjust uh, the suspension me this gsa that's got electronic suspension i can either put it into minimum auto or max and now at the minute i put it on minimum because when it comes to uh, stop lights or traffic lights whatever uh, i want to know that i can get my feet on the floor without kind of thinking uh, am i going to be on my tiptoes with us the luggage the bike this bike's pushing half a ton so i don't want to be getting to traffic lights and thinking am i on my tiptoes or not so for me it's getting the bike set up ready for your little journey uh, with the correct suspension another thing to think about with the suspension is when you're actually riding is how differently the bike's going to handle obviously tipping in is going to be a lot slower maneuvering in the twisties you're not going to have that flickability um, on point on hand so you have to be a little bit smoother and a little bit more uh, direct and on point with your with your riding number four as a pillion then don't be a wriggle bum there's a tendency when you're not that comfortable is just to immediately shift around try and get into a more comfortable position you can't do that as a pillion you're going to change the weight as you can see back here i haven't always got visibility of the road so i might think it's an all right time to shift my weight but equally there might be a corner coming up that might be about to break quite sharply i've got no idea what's going on sometimes it might be a case that if i shift now it completely throws the weight of the bike uh, in the wrong direction if i do need to shift that's why comms are so important I'll ask Matt if it's a good time. Also, it's when you're getting on the bike. I find it pretty hard on this bike to get on and off. I think it's probably because of the luggage it gets in the way of my thunder thighs again. But it means I'm a little bit off balance when I go to sit down. So sometimes I can lose that balance and end up kind of just dropping. Immediately, I want to shift into the position. But if Matt's not ready for that, even though he's stationary, it can make the bike wobble quite a bit. So in summary, try not to shift about, but if you are going to, again, just communicate with your rider and that will make it a lot easier for both of you. Lastly then, my fifth tip for the rider is we've discussed about suspension and how handling is going to be different. That leads me on nicely to the braking. Your braking distance is going to be increased considerably, especially if you are in the wet. You need to be a lot smoother with your braking uh, you need to kind of preempt the braking. You need to, you can't leave it until the last minute like you would normally if you're out by yourself. Uh, the other thing to think about with the braking is how sharp your brakes are and how sharp you're pulling the brakes. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be jabbing on that front brake and then you're, you're pillion banging heads every time you're pulling it. My fifth and final point as the pillion rider then is all about mirroring Matt's body position. If we are going around a bend and he's leaning to the right, I'm doing exactly that. I'm mirroring exactly what he's doing. So if I try and do the opposite to what Matt is doing, it's just gonna pull the bike up into, into a place where it doesn't wanna be. And that's when you're gonna end up going all over the place. Equally, as I'm trying to mirror his body position, I'm not collapsing onto him. I'm trying to hold myself up because otherwise, I'm going to slide right into him and cause him to, <laughs> to go a little bit off kilter. 
Oh, well, there we go, guys. That is it. Our 10 top tips, five for the rider, five for the passenger, on making your life easier and better when two up riding. This is going to be the first uh, of a mini series we're going to do. So this has been our top tips. In the future of this mini series, we are going to find out all the uh, touring and adventure style bikes and any bike that's kind of fitted for two up riding we're going to jump on them and we're going to test them out and we're going to test them on a purely two up riding uh, comfort and everything else in between and we're going to give it a grade and we're going to mark them and see which one the best bike we think for two up riding in 2023 is if you did enjoy this video obviously you need to like it but more importantly you need to subscribe to the channel we have got plenty of review videos coming Obviously, we're going to do some of these two-up riding, and we're going to start doing some travel as well. And there's nothing else to say, apart from, uh, in the meantime, ride safe. Hey, hey, hey. What? Why are you being like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you being like that?